Welcome to Living Life. Uh, how do you know if someone truly loves you? Uh, is there a way for you to be able to tell that? Uh, my daughter, she takes every opportunity, small or big, just any occasion, and she makes me a card to commemorate this small or large uh, occasion. And that's how I know she loves me. You know, for my friends, they take every opportunity not to bless me with a card, but they take every opportunity, small or large, uh, to make fun of something that I do. And that's how I know they, they love me. You know, 1 Timothy is a letter written uh, by the Apostle Paul uh, to his beloved disciple, uh, Timothy, and also the church that they served. And through it, although it's just a letter that shows his love for Timothy, uh, through it, it's also a letter that shows us how much Jesus loved them. And then through all of that, it's a letter that shows how much Jesus actually loves us. Uh, like much of Scripture, uh, it is an outline. It is an expression of God's love for us. Uh, so as we bask in this love today, uh, join me in reading today's passage. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. You know, because this is a love letter for all of us, uh, there are often gifts associated with Christ's love for us. And the first gift that is shown in today's passage uh, is the gift of salvation. You know, we like to, you know, remember the Apostle Paul as this great figure in Christianity. You know, half the New Testament is basically written by him. Uh, he's the great, the greatest missionary. He went around with nothing to his name, encouraging and building up the body of Christ, literally founding churches wherever he went, and ultimately paying for that faith uh, through a life of incarceration, torture, and eventually martyrdom. Uh, but what makes his life so extraordinary was that it didn't start this way. Paul didn't grow up as a Christian. He wasn't born into a Christian family. You know, before he was known to us as Paul, he was Saul, the Pharisee, the Roman citizen, uh, the Jewish elite, uh, who used the status to condemn and persecute and imprison other Christians. You know, but as we know, on that fateful day in Damascus, he met Jesus and he became a new man, one born again through the Spirit, one born again through the touch of Jesus Christ. Uh, so what is the point of today's story? What is the point of this conversion? Is it to highlight how amazing Paul is, that he was able to overcome his wickedness, that he was able to overcome his sin and finally turn into this great man that we know him as? No. That's actually not the point, and that's not what Paul is emphasizing in today's passage. You know, Paul talks about this major change that he experiences in today's letter to Timothy. He writes in verse 13, Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here's a trustworthy saying, uh, saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came to this world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Now, Paul says that he is the worst of all sinners. 
you know, I don't think he's being facetious or hyperbolic here. He actually believes to himself to be the greatest sinner alive because of all that he had done. And the story here is not to highlight himself in this change or to showcase this amazing ability to change and transform. No, he's talking about the most important thing, which is the grace of God that gave him the gift of salvation. And Augustine is also one of the most influential, important figures of the early church, uh, very vital to all that we have today. Uh, but before he became this great Christian leader, he had this ambition uh, to be rich and to join the secular world. Uh, he was known for philandering. Uh, at one point in his life, he followed a cult to try to gain the answers to life questions. He literally ran away uh, from his Christian mother who wanted him to be a Christian person. Uh, but one day, he heard a voice. He said, Pick it up and read. Pick it up and read. And he was very confused. He thought it was children singing. He couldn't see anyone around. He kept hearing the voice, pick it up and read. Pick it up and read. And then he finally realized after some time that it was the voice of God telling him to pick up the Bible and to read it. He found this Bible and he opened it and he turned right to Romans chapter 13, verses 13 to 14. It says, Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. You know, he, because of this one passage, he understood that it was Christ talking to him. And instead of reaching out to the ways of this world, he finally understood what it meant to clothe himself in Jesus Christ. That was the grace shown to him. You know, every one of us who believe in Christ, we all have this call. You know, one day somehow Christ has called himself to us. You know, we might have this amazing story like Paul or Augustine, or we might have just a very normal, nothing story that turned us to Christ. But every one of them, there's one similarity, and that is Christ. That Christ loved us and called us. Not because of something that we were able to do, not because we were good, but because we were sinners. And even though we were sinners, Scripture tells us that Christ died for us. He chose us first. He called us first. He loved us first. And then he gave us this gift of salvation. I pray that everyone here today is able to remember this love and remember that this gift of salvation came from Jesus. It's free to us, but it came at a cost to him. And let us be able to live understanding of that love. The second love that is shown in today's passage, the second gift of love, is the gift of his call. You know, at the end of this chapter, we see Paul encouraging his disciple Timothy. He reminds him of his call in Jesus Christ and actually calls him his son, his spiritual son. You know, Timothy had this special call to be a worker for Christ, to be a missionary. But that didn't preclude him from dangers. You know, that didn't automatically save him from the lures of sin. As a matter of fact, because he chose this road, it almost guaranteed that he would face dangers, that he would face suffering, that he would face temptation and the lures of sin. So what does Paul do? Paul reminds him to stand firm in his faith, to hold fast to it, and to keep a good conscience, and to be able to rely on the word of God, the teachings of Jesus Christ. You know, how important it is for us to have the Word of God and to be able to keep it. You know, the Word of God that Christ gives to us, this gift, uh, the gift of His truth, is a safeguard against the world, uh, against the world, because we know that the Word of God is greater than anything of this world, that the Word of God is powerful, more powerful than anything in this world can throw at us, and it is impossible for us to hold fast onto our faiths and keep our conscience clean without holding fast to the Word of God. And that's what we're doing today. We're reading the Word of God. We're meditating on it. Uh, we, Scripture tells us that we need to you know, have it from our lips at all times. But I think the most important thing that we need to do is to take this Word of God and to be able to live it out. You know, I know that many of us, we do this QT every day, but the best way for us to make this come alive is to take what we know from this, what we learn from this, what God is trying to tell us from our daily QT and to be able to apply it to our lives. It could be something very tiny. It could be something huge and life-changing, whatever it may be. We must be able to take this word of God, this gift that he has given us, and be able to live it out. I pray that everyone here today is able to hear the word of God today, to be able to take it into our hearts, and most importantly, to be able to use this gift to live it out every day. And then we are able to stand firm 
in the faith that God has provided for us. You are his beloved and he is ours. You know, we are God's beloved and he loves us very, very much. And with that comes the ultimate gift of salvation. And with that comes the gift of the word to protect us and to be able to help us to live out our faith every day. You know, love is never just an empty emotion. Love is not just an intense feeling that we have. You know, we're not just love-stricken teenagers that daydream about our crushes that we have. You know, love is actually fulfilled in word and deed. Christ loved us first. He showed us what love is. Uh, let us be able to return this love back to him by loving him with all that we have today and every day. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this amazing gift of love that you have given us. Uh, you loved us first. You chose us first, not because we were good, but because we were ignorant. Uh, Lord, help us to remember this love and be able to live in it every day. Help us to remember this amazing gift of salvation that came at a cost to you, but that was free for us. And let us be able to hold fast to this loving gift of the word that you have given us as well and be able to use it uh, to hold firm onto our faith and to be a blessing unto others as well. Lord, we thank you for your love and help us to respond to it by loving you back. We thank you and we love you once again and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.